welcome back to the garden. So I've been wanting to film an update here for, for weeks, but it's, it's just been raining relentlessly. The whole of July was complete washout. It's the 1st of August as I film this, and it is nice and sunny, but even so, tomorrow is forecast more rain, possibly thunderstorms, ugh, and it just goes downhill again. So, and prior to that, of course, June was the hottest ever. So it's been one extreme to the other. Then how has the extreme weather affected the garden? Well, we'll have a proper tour around in a moment, but first I'll show you a couple of clips to bring you up to date on the development of the garden over the last few months. I've just finished potting up the last of the brassicas, so I thought I'd give you a quick look around the polytunnel because this is this is as full as it's ever been. Just inside the door, these are the leftover brassicas, this lot here, which I'm going to give away. Um, got a load of leek on the go, it's not quite ready. I'll probably plant this straight out rather than pot it up. These are aubergines, they'll be potted up in time, and these are onions which should just be planted straight out, and then all along this bench everything that's in the individual small parts are brassicas starting at this end uh, we've got calabrese purple sprouting cauliflower and the kale the kale's looking a bit floppy because like i say i've only just potted those up on the back shelf here it's almost entirely tomatoes so two different types of tomatoes these ones San Mazzano they're going to stay in here and I'm going to experiment with some of these the rubylicious ones I'll plant outside and see how they do so they're supposed to be a indoor or outdoor tomato whereas these ones are just indoor over here is all the squash so I've got pumpkins butternut squash um, courgettes they're all once they get well this one's <laughs> nearly ready already but once they all get to be about that size or bigger, basically bursting out of these pots, they'll go out into the garden. These little pots are all peppers. They've only just been potted up. So they'll be staying in the polytunnel. As well these, these are all chilies. first week of June and frankly the garden's looking a bit parched. It hasn't rained here for about three weeks. Really unusual. I'm just about to plant out all the brassicas but before I do that I'm going to sort out some irrigation for the squash. We'll start at the top of the garden with the, well, the headline crop, <laughs> the wheat. It's not doing as well as it should. And I know that because if you look at the height of this stuff, which barely comes up to my knee, and we compare that to the height of the wheat right at the back of the garden there, we're now down by the polytunnel. And if I stand here again, you can see how much taller this section of wheat is. Now, the only difference is that this part of the garden is shaded for a few hours each day and over the month of June when it was just blisteringly hot day in day out just that bit of shade from about three four o'clock onwards has made all the difference this really coped a lot better overall then I've got to mark the wheat as being disappointing and that like I say is purely down to the weather and it's disappointing because I can see at the end of the rows there and that little shaded bit how well it could have done had 
wet, just things been a little bit different. Even if it had been the other way round, so if we'd had a really wet start, so if June was wet and then July was super hot, <laughs> this, would, this would be romping along. But it's this crop and the potatoes, which we'll come to in a minute, those are the two that have really suffered. Um, the potatoes I did irrigate even and they've, they've still not done well. The wheat, I just couldn't irrigate it, I just didn't have enough water. And uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll discuss all that in a bit. Now it might look like the wheat is ready to harvest, but it's not. Um, I did look up this variety, I've forgotten what it's called now, but I'll put it up on the screen. And the information I found su suggested the first or second week of September. The way to tell with wheat is to take some of the ears, I think they're called ears, ears of corn, that sounds vaguely, vaguely right, and then chew them. And if they're chewy, it's not ready. <laughs> so it's, it's all got to be hardened off, basically. So surprisingly, perhaps, given that how it looks, it will need at least another month to properly ripen before harvest. So here in the polytunnel, all that's left is, well, what we can call a permanent crop. So things like the tomatoes, uh, the peppers, chilies, and the aubergines. So I've planted out a load of tomatoes and a couple of aubergine plants in here. And I noticed this morning, so these are, um, Rubylicious this lot and I've got the first ripened almost ripe one so that's rather exciting. I have set up this little irrigation thing it's something I got dirt cheap off of eBay and I didn't really expect it to work very well but it does um, it's a very simple device every 24 hours it comes on for the amount of time that you set it so in my case 60 seconds and it just pumps water from here and then through these little drippers and this was something I did just to keep this lot alive when I went away for a few days. And to my surprise, considering how cheap this device was, um, it's actually been reliable so far, which is nice. The other way of coping with going away for a few days is obviously just to have a big container and chuck loads of water in it. And <laughs> that's worked well here. And for the peppers. These are bell peppers and you can see they're actually starting to fruit. As are the chilies. Only just starting to come out, but there they are. These are the aubergine plants. Um, no fruits on these at all, but they are looking healthy at least. And then this tray is salad, or it will be one day. <laughs> I did plant some salad in the trough by the kitchen door, but the, um, the chickens ate it all. Now this bed is clover. And as you can see, it's just romping along. It's one of the things that's done really well with all this in incredible amount of rain. I will actually need to mow this. I'm gonna mow it later on today. And the reason is it's starting to flower. Now, of course, clover's not a crop that I'm gonna eat, but the idea of this is it fixes nitrogen in the soil for future fertility. Because this is a rotation system, so next year, the squash and the potatoes that are in this bed down here We'll move up and be in this bed. Moving down a little bit, we come to the two rows of potatoes. Now this is one of the most disappointing crops. And this again is purely down to the weather. What you see here for the first, well, from here down to here, these are the earlies. And I haven't even bothered digging them up. Well, I've dug up a couple and <laughs> there's just nothing there. I suspect you're having trouble making out where the potatoes are. <laughs> That's all part of the problem. Really the potatoes should have got off to a nice healthy start and they should be shading out all the weeds by now and they just never got that start. They are starting to look a bit more healthy but it's late in the season now for the potatoes and I just don't think there's going to be much of a crop. Well I know there's not going to be much of a crop and I did try irrigating these. I got this which is a um, soaker hose. So this is a long hose which goes nearly the whole row and it's full of tiny holes and so the idea is that you put your hose pipe in one end and then it leaks all the way down it with a controlled amount. That works okay. Trouble is though with the irrigation because I irrigated the potatoes and I set up an irrigation system for the squash as well and I also watered the brassicas. I noticed one irrigation session took 500 litres of water. Now bear in mind, I'm completely off grid here and I'm 100% reliant on rainwater. And I have a few thousand litres of water stored, which for me is 
plenty. Um, that's even with a washing machine and as many baths as I want. But the moment you start trying to irrigate crops, <laughs> it, it vanishes at an alarming rate. Which has got me thinking again about building some kind of um, pond, some kind of water reservoir that can fill up in the winter and I can use in the summer. But I didn't get far into thinking about that before <laughs> it just started lashing down with rain for a whole month. This, by the way, is utterly useless. It, it lasted about two weeks and it was only a cheap thing that I got off of eBay, but a complete waste of money. Um, I don't think it's UV stable. What happened was the tiny, tiny holes in here started opening up into big holes. Um, I taped up the first big hole, but after once you get a few big holes in it, it's completely useless. That's where all the water comes out and it's not a controlled irrigation anymore. So yeah, it's a cheap soaker hose, complete waste of money. This rodent is squash and it's doing really well. And by squash, I mean courgettes, uh, butternut squash and pumpkins. That's what I got on the go this year. That cheapy irrigation kit that I got really panned out. That was a, a, a good purchase, unlike the, <laughs> the soaker hose. That just enabled the plants to really get going at a crucial moment just after they've been planted. And you can see the results. So the, the first three plants here are courgettes, uh, or zucchinis if you prefer. And they're producing more than I can eat basically, so <laughs> no complaints there. And then along here we've got a mixture of pumpkins and butternut squash. So we've got pumpkins. And then some butternut squash in there. All doing really well. When I said the potato crop should be big enough by now to shade out the weeds, this is what I meant. So this, the squash is doing exactly what I'd planned for, for it, but also I'd plan that for the potatoes. So you can see here, there's no, I haven't uh, mulched or needed to weed underneath this crop. It's just, there's so much of it. There's so much coverage with these massive leaves. It's just shading out most of the weed. The other crop that's doing really well is the brassicas. Up this end, we've got kale. And I've been eating this for ages now. <laughs> it's like pretty much every other day is kale day. So I've just shown you how this squash crop will sprawl out and smother all the weeds. Obviously the brassicas won't do that because they tend to go up. So I've mulched this, this lot with cardboard and that's, that's done the trick. So there's very few weeds in here with it. And as you can see, a really healthy crop. We're right down at the other end of the row now and I can show you the calabrese, which is the heading broccoli. You can see some of the calabrese is ready to eat right now. And no trace of caterpillars. <laughs> and that's of course because of this mesh on it. Finally, a quick look at the everything else bed, which is where everything else goes. I've got some peas on the go here, some more carrots, um, we've got there onions, leeks, and here some peppers. Now I planted this because back in June it looked like it was going to be the hottest summer ever. I thought why not put some of the polytunnel plants outside? And uh, then it just rained a lot. <laughs> some outdoor tomatoes here, and I'd say they're doing about the same as the ones in the polytunnel which is interesting. So no better and no worse. There's a few onions on the go, loads of beans, <laughs> loads and loads of beans. In the bottom corner here, it's a bit of a mess to be honest. There were a whole lot of peas here, just as they were ripening, uh, pigeons took the lot. I haven't dug it up though because there's still a load of carrots in this section. They're actually doing quite well, so I won't dig them up until I'm ready to eat the carrots. So that bottom corner is a bit of a write-off really. Um, it was just too close to the hedgerow so all the wild plants have just come in and, and swamped the crops. But even up here where I've been able to keep a much better eye on it, you can see the given the slightest chance the grass is trying to come through. Bear in mind that this time last year this was a lawn this bit, this part. That's it then, you're up to date. So as we've seen it's a bit of a mixed bag and I'm totally blaming the weather for that, nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm also glad that I'm not a real farmer because just being so reliant on the weather I would be stressed. Next big thing will be the harvesting of the wheat and then once it's dry processing of the wheat. So join me for that. Cheers for now.